Should my doctor measure my belly at my prenatal visits? The bottom line up front is no. Stick around and I'll tell you why. For decades now, obstetricians and midwives have measured the size of your belly with a tape measure running from your pubic bone to the top of your uterine fundus. In theory, when this is done between about 20 and 36 weeks, the size of this fundal height measured in centimeters will roughly correspond to the week's gestation. So if you're 32 weeks along, your belly should measure roughly 32 centimeters. This is called McDonald's rule. Traditionally, if this measurement's off by more than two or three centimeters, plus or minus, your doctor might order an ultrasound to make sure your baby isn't too big or too small. So what's wrong with all this? Well, it simply is inaccurate. It was promoted in the 1990s as a solution for detection of small or big babies when ultrasound wasn't available, but it was never shown to be that sensitive or that specific of a test. In reality, there's simply no scientific evidence that this measurement has any ability to predict babies that are too small, too big, or anything else. That was a conclusion of a 2015 Cochrane review with all the available literature. The measurement has little intra-observer consistency, meaning that people take the measurement in different ways, so that unless the same person measures it every time, vastly different numbers can be had. It's heavily influenced by the bias of the provider, knowing how many weeks the patient is and seeing the numbers on the tape even, and there's poor agreement about what the top of the fundus even actually is. There's a narrow range of women whose body habitus is amenable to accurate measurements, and there's significant ethnic variation in the measurements as well. Even the original and most cited trial that helped standardize these measurements in clinical practice showed no difference in fetal outcomes, which is ultimately what it's all about anyway. The measurement's heavily influenced by the fetal and maternal position, and even how much urine is in the mother's bladder when the measurement's being done, let alone how much the patient weighs. Look at this picture where the only difference is that the belly on the right is slightly bigger than the belly on the left. These two blue lines are not equal, though the babies are the same size. Basic geometry tells us the fallacy of fundal height measurements. Where an effect has been observed for detecting fetal size abnormalities, it's in the highest risk patients, like diabetic women who should be receiving serial growth ultrasounds anyway. Remember, it was originally envisioned as something to be used where ultrasound machines just weren't available, meaning resource poor areas. But in the United States, at least, women who have conditions like diabetes or hypertension should be getting ultrasound measurements anyway. So unless the same person is measuring the fundal height each time in a double-blinded manner, meaning they don't know how many weeks the patient is and they can't see the numbers on the tape, and only in normal weight women who have an empty bladder and the fetus is in a straight longitudinal position, and they chart the values on tables specifically made for the woman's ethnicity, then fundal height measurements are a complete waste of time and not effective at all at predicting small or large babies, at least not any better than palpation of your belly. The truth is we should be screening women at risk for fetal growth abnormalities with serial ultrasounds, like diabetic women or those with excessive weight gain, patients who have hypertension, etc. And we should palpate the fetuses in low-risk women. It's time for McDonald's rule to be of historical interest only, though it's an open question whether it might be a benefit in some high-risk women in resource-poor countries. Not everybody can afford an ultrasound machine for their diabetics and hypertensive patients.